Hey, it's Rosa59 here. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make this sting sword from the movie The Hobbit. And it's pretty cool. Uh, turned out better than what I thought it would be. I'll go through the steps and how I did everything uh, to make it. And yes, it does glow in the dark blue too. And I'll show you how to do that as well. And you can download these free plans of the sting sword. Once you have printed out your template, you want to cut it out and I did it where I cut it out into sections because I found that was easier. So you have the blade, your middle part, handle, and the end part. And I used 1 8 and a quarter inch hardboard uh, for the middle part and the end part. I will give a link below of where I and got the idea from. Unfortunately, I tried the idea that somebody made it into for the sword with using the hardboard. Um, I, for whatever reason, it didn't work for me. It kind of broke. So I used only the middle part and the end part uh, for this project. And the other stuff, I had to use other material. And I'll show you how I did that. For the end part, I used 1 8 hardboard at the top and on the bottom as well. In the middle, I used two quarter inch hardboards there. Um, so as you kind of can see the top and bottom I cut to the exact size of the template and then on the inside I made it just a bit smaller so that the handle will fit in right. Once I glued it all together then I took my Dremel tool and with the sander attachment and just sanded in round over all the edges. So this is sort of uh, the sword that I started out first which I was talking about before but this middle part uh, where the blade and the handle kind of join into. It worked but the blade and the handle for gluing all up on MDF did not work. So I used for the middle part, uh, I cut it out on the bandsaw. Uh, for the top and bottom I used 1 8 hardboard and the middle, three of them I used a quarter inch hardboard. I glued it up, let it dry and then I used uh, the Dremel Multimax sander attachment uh, with it and I just kind of guess sort of where the middle was and on an angle uh, as you see it in the black highlighted marker there um, I did that on all four sides and I just used the sander to sand it all the way down to where that black line is. For the handle I used one inch by one inch wood. Uh, the length is basically uh, the length that I used for the template of the handle and I just traced around it, cut it out on the bandsaw and then I used the Dremel Multimax tool with the same sander attachment and just kind of sanded it to the shape. And these are what the parts look like so far. So you have your middle part, your handle, and your end part all sanded with a Dremel Multimax tool. Or if you didn't have one, you certainly can use any sanding uh, type of form material that will work. For the blade, I used 3 quarter inch pine uh, wood. I used the template to trace it out and to find the center of the sword and then at the end part I roughly just left about I think it was about a half inch extra on the end so that I'm able to do the tongue and groove uh, joint together with the middle part. And back to the middle part I matched up the tongue from the sword from the blade so that I could cut the groove out so I know exactly like how long and how wide to make the groove. I used the Dremel tool with kind of that you would use for just kind of carving out and I just slowly kind of carved it out to the depth and to the width that I was happy with so that the blade and the middle part would fit in together. For the blade I found the middle on the top and on the side part for the height 
and I just found the middle on both points and then I sanded it down till I matched that point on an angle that way you get an angle on your blade and I did that on both sides top and bottom and this is what it looks like so far once you have your sword all nicely sanded for the blade where the tongue is you may have to sand it a bit just to make sure that it all fits in and once you are happy with that then you want to glue it together and let it dry I just use regular wood glue just to glue it together let it dry overnight and don't worry if you have some gaps uh, because wood putty or wood filler will do the job to attach the handle and the end part together I used quick wood epoxy putty and I just put it into the end part and then I just put I just shoved it in with the handle and then just let it dry for about an hour this putty is sandable and paintable so don't worry if you get it on the excess on the outside you can always sand it afterwards so you should have something looking like this now because your blade and your middle part are all glued together you have your handle and your end part all together and all glued together and now we just need to attach the two parts together which I used a dowel I believe it was about a 3 8 dowel that I had and I just basically found the center roughly of the handle and then roughly the center of the handle of the actual blade part I guess you could say they're attached to the middle part and just kind of roughly did I can't remember I'm gonna say maybe at least four inches of dowel could have been three to four inches or so in length I just wanted to make sure it had a good length the dowel and then basically once you drilled your holes and the dowel fits in okay do a test fit then I just used PL premium because that is a construction adhesive I know it's going to be very strong and if somebody's going to be holding the blade obviously you're going to have the emotion of swinging it like a blade so you want to make sure it's nice and strong and PL premium takes about 24 hours to fully dry cure so I just left it overnight for eight hours and it would be ready to go for the next day and this part here I think I over sanded the handle when I did it it just didn't look right to me the shape so what I ended up doing was I came up with an idea of I had some veneer lying around so I took some veneer I cut it out to the template of the handle and then I just dampened a paper towel and then I just wrapped up the veneer in it and heat up in the microwave for about 40 seconds or so till it was nice and warm that way it could bend to the handle without actually tearing because veneer when it's dry it will tend to break wherever the grain direction is going so I just had to make sure that my glue gun was all nice and warm and I basically put that on the handle and then just put the veneer that was warm on top of it because I couldn't find any other glue that was sticking to it and I found the hot glue gun stuck really really well so I was able to shape it and put it to where I wanted it to be and then once that was done on both sides then I realized that obviously the end parts needed to be filled and I used this other type of epoxy putty you certainly could use the other kind um, that I used before but I just had this lying around so I'm just trying to use up what I had just shoved it in all my gaps or anything like that this stuff when it dries it's amazing it dries like rock hard you can sand it um, you could carve it basically even if you wanted to uh, so that's basically what I did for this just so that I was able to get the shape that I wanted to and now I know it looks kind of funny but you're not going to see it once it's painted so any gaps or any holes like that I kind of filled up now uh, with putty and with the epoxy uh, putty as well and once it was dry I let it sat for about an hour or two hours you could do this stuff does harden up pretty good but because it was so thick I'd recommend leaving it for two hours or so and then I just used my Dremel Multimax tool with the sanding attachment head to it and I just sanded it kind of round even took my sandpaper and just kind of did it two by hand a little bit just to shape it to make it all nice and, and smooth.
I primed it with two coats of primer. I used the Bare Primer and Sealer. It comes in a straight purple can. And I used the template to trace out the design, just matched it all up to best ability where I wanted it to be. And then I just used carbon paper to trace it on after I primed. Then I used my wood burning tool and burned the design on. The only thing I would recommend is I would probably do it, if I were to do it again, I probably would do the wood burning first. The only concern I had was when I wood burned it first is I didn't want all the primer to go into the gaps, otherwise you wouldn't see it with the more layers of paint that I put on. But I found with the primer it was a little harder, it just took a longer time because it's it had primer on top so it kind of smelled. So I would recommend doing it before and then just watching your area where you prime it so you don't get so much primer inside the actual design. And then I used some silver paint and I painted the blade and the middle part and the end part all silver. And I think I did about two or three coats of that uh, till I was happy with the look. And then for the handle I just used some brown paint that I had. And for the handle design I used my Cricut machine because I found that was easier for me because it's like contact kind of backing that it has to it so I thought that'd be easier but if you didn't have that you certainly could use the design that is provided in the free plan for you guys to download you could use that as well you could print it out in color and then just glue it on you just might have to leave a little bit of excess so that when it wraps around the edges that you're able to put it all together smoothly so it looks like single transition between everything and I just painted that silver and glued it on and what I did too also for the handle I used water base uh, spray can and I just sprayed it uh, with I think three coats at least just so that when people are holding it that it doesn't come off because the stickiness would be the same thing with the paper I would put a lot of clear coats onto it because this is the main thing so I just kind of sprayed it heavily on and just let it sit for hours uh, and just kept building it up that way then it would be nice and strong and no way of coming off and for the display uh, plaque what I did was I printed it out so when you trace it out you want to flip it so you don't see the image so you just see the back of the paper all white uh, for the reason is I'm going to show you later on why that's important to do that and I just used a three quarter inch uh, pine and I cut it out on the bandsaw then I used I believe it was a quarter inch round over router and I just went ahead and routed it over and with the plaque the reason for that is is I just went up just a tiny bit just so it kind of gives that plaque edge kind of look to it it kind of gives a little little neat design on it as well and then you want to take your scissors and when you're cutting it out it has two sections and I cut out the edge that was closer because we use the router of a quarter inch we lost that by routering so now we want to match it up with our actual design hopefully that makes sense to you guys I use my wood burning tool but it's got a flat end on the end of it and because it is a laser uh, printout of the image you can do a heat transfer to it so basically I just worked slowly at it and just kept going so I could transfer my whole image over and once I transfer the image over this is what I got it to look like and even though some areas didn't fully get it it was perfect because it kinda gives it this uh, old looking uh, plaque style kinda look. I recommend just any clear coat or top coat would be fine. Three coats on the plaque and for the handle I just did uh, another one on the handle and then on the whole unit I did I think two coats or so or three coats I did just because it's going to be used a lot uh, if it is or even if it's just a display I don't want the finish or the paint to get chipped easily this way it's got a nice nice top coat onto it and for the plaque uh, you want to hang your sword and these are just the little L kind of screws uh, that I bought at Home Depot and I just kind of roughly guessed where I wanted it to be, kind of held the sword in the middle and then just made two little imprints. And then to screw it in for the back for hanging, I just used some, any regular picture hanging hook. And I used a number four screw by 3 eighths long. 
and I just went ahead and screwed it into the back. Back to the sword and off of Amazon I bought uh, Glow. It is glow in the dark paint and because from the movie when the orcs are nearby the blade turns blue. And these are just some final pictures of what it looks like.